Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Adisa Burton. In the headlines, Dominica to participate in International SIDS Conference. Prime Minister Skerritt on a drive to create a more efficient public service. And tomorrow's Grade 6 National Assessment to be done online. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. The fourth International Conference on Small Island Developing States, SIDS 4, will be hosted in Antigua and Barbuda from May 27 to 30, 2024, and is expected to decide the next 10 year plan of action for small island developing states, 2024 to 2034. Minister for Environment, Rural Modernization, Kalinago Upliftment and Constituency Empowerment shared some insight on Dominica's upcoming participation at the event. The summit itself brings together uh, policymakers across the region, across small island developing states. So we speak about the Caribbean, the, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean. Um, it also brings together uh, technical experts from across the world who have worked and who have experiences in small island developing states. Dominica will be represented at, at, that, at that event. It's much bigger than just a, a climate conference. Uh, we will speak about green energy, we will speak about um, economics, there will be issues on migration, they will be, they will be discussing um, um, law enforcement, so it's a, it's a massive um, conference. Dominica will host its own side event at the SIDS4 conference to recount aspects of the country's journey towards building a resilient nation. Within the, the, the SIDS event, we, Dominica will have a side event. It's, it's a, one of the important things that we realize that that we have to engage more people across the region. Having side events can, can be an exp expensive venture. Um, um, so we have been we have been garnering resources from a number of agencies so that Dominica itself can showcase its story within the SIDS conference. So we're happy to be part of the conference and be part of all the conversations, but we will have a, a, a piece that, that will showcase Dominica. The expectation is that our Prime Minister will be on that on, on at the SIDS as well. And he will present in the in the in the Dominica's um, um, side event that will really tell the world our story of resiliency. A significant aspect of this side event will include the indigenous heritage of Dominica, from which he says the resilience of the island stems. And what is going to also be interesting for that side event, we, there will be a Carnago presence, because it is the view of the government, and my view that um, the resiliency of our country stems from the rich heritage of Karinago culture, um, living on these lands for, for thousands of years. So we will have a, a small delegation of Karinago people present to also tell their story as part of the bigger Dominica story. Um, so we will be out there at the SEEDS conference to support our, our fellow OECS and Karinago member, um, Antigua and Barbuda, but also using that as a platform to tell our story, how we have been able to rebuild our country on, for the most part on our own resources, but also telling the story in a very dynamic way that speaks to the importance of indigenous people, the grassroots movement, um, and how policymakers can use do that knowledge to, to better um, um, add to, to the values across, across the region. SIDS 4 will take place under the theme, charting the course towards resilient prosperity. Prime Minister Skerritt has appealed to senior public officers to examine their management practices in order to improve service delivery to members of the public. This as Prime Minister Skerritt met with members of Cabinet, the Committee of Permanent Secretaries and Heads of Departments on May 21 to discuss ways to improve the output across the public service, reduce costs and become more responsive to the needs of Dominican citizens. 
as permanent secretaries, heads of department, heads of division, the question is, what do you understand your role and responsibilities to be? Do you consider yourself to be fulfilling your role and responsibilities? In what ways can you improve upon your performance and contribution to achieving the objectives and goals of the government? Have you set yourselves targets which you monitor to ensure your personal and the ministry's meaningful progress towards these goals? How often do you assess the progress of your ministry or division in achieving set targets? If you are underperforming, what are the main factors affecting your performance? And what remedial action or actions are you taking to address the situation? Is your contribution or lack thereof adversely or positively affecting the advancement of government's programs on the national or national development? Are you someone who relishes responsibility or do you constantly wait to be given instructions or direction on the next course of actions? Prime Minister Skerritt also admonished public officers to adhere to public sector regulations, including the Public Service Act, General Orders and the Public Service Commission Act and regulations. How familiar are you with these pieces of legislation? Do you take the time to read the legislation to ensure that you are applying them correctly? What systems have you put in place to get staff to become more accountable, both in terms of the output and the use of government resources? Do you monitor staff performance as well as their attendance and presence of work, and I dare add punctuality. Punctuality. What system have you put in place to ensure that staff performance appraisals are done on time? Do you recognize and congratulate the high performers and admonish those who are not performing? Do you recommend for appointment in a timely manner those high performers and achievers or those you consider to be your friends? From my perspective, we can redefine those roles and responsibility and to allow us to be, to be of greater contribution and greater help um, in addressing the issues confronting the country. And so I look forward to your engagement. Feel free to speak and to share your perspectives on how you believe that we can forward to get. This is, this is an opportunity for us to engage ourselves but this is, this, is, this is for us to sincerely examine and, and to see how we can be more effective in the delivery of services to the people who we serve, the, 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 the citizens and residents of our country. The Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence will conduct the 2024 Grade 6 National Assessment tomorrow, Thursday, May 23 and Friday, May 24, 2024. Grade 6 students all around the island will be tested in four subject areas, namely mathematics, language arts, science, and social studies. This year we have a total of 835 candidates to include 412 girls and 423 boys. Uh, including in that total, we have three independent candidates and each the exams begin at 7 45 each day this year all four papers or subjects will be done online an initiative that was first introduced two years ago we're excited to embark upon a transformative journey in that all four assessments will be online this initiative started in 2022 where mm. we had one assessment online i think it was social studies and in 2023 we had two assessments online, namely social science and science and technology. But this year, the language arts paper one component, the mathematics and the social science and the science and technology exams assessments will be online. Mm -hmm. Yes, composition will remain paper-based as has been done in previous years. Ms. Robin explained that students should not be worried in the event of a power loss or a drop in internet connectivity. In case of a power loss, and that is a concern that even parents and teachers have from time to time, and now and then they will ask us about that. Once the students get into the assessment, 
they are in, they can continue answering, their, responding to the items. If there's a power loss that can continue or drop in connectivity, what will happen when it comes to submission, that is the next time they need it again. So during that time, it does not interrupt. Even if there's a power loss or connectivity loss, it does not interrupt the continuance of the um, exam. Meanwhile, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Robert Geist, has some advice for parents this year. Allow the children to be children. Let them relax. Do not pressure them. The more pressure they are under, the, the harder it is for them to mm -hmm. pass the mm -hmm. exam, for them to do well at the exam. Give them a nice, decent breakfast on the morning of both exams um, for the Grade 6 National and all the exams for the CSEC exams. Mm -hmm. um, Ensure that the students get to the center early so that they can relax. The exams are supposed to start at 7.45. Don't leave home at 7.45, but don't get them to the school at 7.45. Get them at a reasonable time so they can relax before the exam. Um, once the students are at the exam center, leave them, kiss them on the forehead, on the cheek, on the hand, wherever you kiss them, um, and leave. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, Honorable Roland Royer, says investments in agriculture are part of government's goal to increase production of targeted crops. He says to achieve that objective, government has and will continue to make significant investments in the agriculture sector. This investment will boost government's effort as we seek to rapidly expand on agricultural production of targeted crops. As we build resilience in the sector, we will now be able to provide high-quality, disease-resistant planting material to farmers and introduce new high-yielding crop varieties that are more tolerant to the impacts of climate change. In our quest to build resilience, we ensure that the lab provides a seed cold storage room, which will be used to establish a national seed bank which is critical for post-disaster recovery. The training of farmers will also be a priority of government. The complex is also furnished with modern training facilities to build capacity of our farmers and students, equipping them with the necessary knowledge and skills as we work towards the transformation of the agricultural sector. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Agriculture Sector Transformation Roadmap speaks to creating one mile as the center for innovation, technology, and agricultural research. This facility complements our efforts, and you will have observed the massive transformation of the propagation station over the past six months. Construction is currently ongoing on a new shed for the development of citrus and banana plants, while designs for a new animal and plant health lab is in progress. We saw the construction of two nursery sheds, and we are currently constructing an additional shed as we make preparations for the hardening of 45,000 tissue culture banana plants and the budding of over 100,000 citrus plants. We are now in the design stage for a new animal and plant health laboratory with adequate space to house research institutions such as CADI, which will also form part of this center. Minister Roye added that these investments will be seen around the island in an effort to increase Dominica's agricultural output. As we are currently planning propagation and distribution plant over the island, we are also making investments in other locations. We will see a further investment of $2.8 million to construct a citrus certification facility at London Dairy, expansion to the propagation station at Laplin, and improvement to the propagation station at Woodford Hill. At this point, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the government of the People's Republic of China for this facility and the support provided to our farmers over the years. You're watching National Focus. More when we return.
ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Acting Chief Cultural Officer Olson Matthew is pleased with this year's Domfesta celebrations so far. The annual arts festival is expected to come to a close in one week's time. Domfesta 2024, the Dominica Festival of Arts as we call it, has truly been great thus far. I mean, it's not over yet, but to this point I can say the activities have been successful. Those hosted by the Cultural Division and of course those hosted by independent organizers. From the Cultural Division's perspective, we've had the Team Culture Community Drive, where we went into the various communities, giving little tokens of appreciation to some deserving people, some deserving individuals and cultural stalwarts. And I think that was well received by both the, the individuals themselves, their families, and the general public. Um, we also had the Segment 13 Hike, which was organized by the Capuchin Group. Another one of this year's highlights, Fusion on the Promenade, was held last Friday. And that was a, an activity, as the name implies, to bring together all of the cultural elements. So we're talking cuisine, we're talking music, dance, everything cultural, and brought it together to one location, which was the Promenade, which already has its own audience, but we just brought the culture to them. And that activity was also a success. Also forming part of the annual festival is an art exhibition launched on Tuesday. It features works from various artists, some of them members of the Whitey Kubuli Artists Association and others who do their thing independently. And it was curated by Aaron Hamilton, our resident artist. And I, I must say, I mean, opinion, very impressive work from the, from the artists, you know, different mediums, different formats, and just overall impressive artwork. And um, you cannot have a, a festival of the arts and not feature the fine arts. So that is the, the, the arts, I would say, their contribution to Domfesta. And we always feature the fine arts in everything. Mr. Matthew says the Domfesta Arts Festival never disappoints. In terms of the quality of the work, the different mediums that they use, the different formats, you have portraits, you have landscapes, you have abstract, you have all kind of different textures, everything. And um, it's curated by Aaron Hamilton, our resident artist, and I must commend him on the, the work that he's done and he has been doing as far as the art school. Domfesta also fits neatly into Dominica's tourism package. Domfesta by nature is centered around the month of May, which is also Tourism Awareness Month, so you can see the link already. And we see the month of May as an opportunity or another opportunity to bring visitors to Dominica. And we're talking about um, visiting nationals or tourist foreigners and uh, just like independence just like carnival we see may as an op another opportunity to bring stayover visitors to dominica so you will find activities like jazz and creole also included in the domfesta calendar an art exhibition which forms part of domfesta activities will remain open to the public until friday resident artist at the old mill cultural center aaron hamilton is encouraging the public to drop by Old Mill has been always keeping an art exhibition along with the different festivals that we have been, be it emancipation, be it independence, and Dom Festa. So it is no ordinary thing, it's not a new thing. It is open to all artists. And um, what I like to see is artists come together and really bring out their expression their ideas, you know, tell their stories in their own way. You know, a lot of things being happening in the country, artists can express it in, in, in artworks, in painting. Mr. Hamilton believes more focus needs to be placed on the artist's work. A festival of some sort where artists can, you know, always showcase their work, where we can have um, bigger, bigger venues where these this artworks can be published so people can see and people can have an idea. And it won't only take the, the shape of just painting on small canvases, but big murals, you know, all around the city. As you can see, we already start um, doing murals from, from sometimes back from 2019, from after Maria, we started doing murals. I think when WA, that's Whitey Kubli Artists Association, started, it started with the Sakafet mural, which we did on the Bayfront. He says the murals and other art displays provide a snapshot of what the visual artists are capable of doing. 
there's a lot to say through his eyes. He is a thinker. He's somebody who views art and uh, or view his world differently. It's sort of a study for him, and he uses his imagination to really bring out new things into this world. And you know, so I see we have to create spaces and opportunities for artists to really express themselves and to do these kind of things. Mr. Hamilton explained some of what one can look for at a visual art exhibition. Of course, it starts there. It's something that has to attract you or, or draw you in. And then you will kind of develop a type of a relationship with it based on how you feel about it. So it invokes a, a, a feeling, you know. So a lot of times, even when I am painting, I would tell somebody, um, it's not just about being pretty or the, it's, it's how I feel about it. It's, um, it's a certain something that I'm trying to find. Um, in this painting, however, this is a landscape painting, which what I was trying to do when I painted this, it is an acrylic painted on canvas. Um, I'm trying to create a form of clarity, trying to capture the essence of a place that I have been to. The goal of the artist would be to have the viewer recognize the place depicted in the painting, but also catch the beauty and vibrancy of the colors. How that mountain is, you know, way back there, so and what is up close, and you know, so I really try to find that difference between, you know, or creating clarity, and at the same time, that can give your viewer a nice, peaceful feeling, you know, just by looking at that and enjoy it. So it's something that creates a nice ambience, even though you have it in your home, you know, that's a place I like. It brings about a type of memory. Um, I remember a time I used to say what I, I aim to do is to bring about mem a, a type of memoir to my viewers or those who have the ad, who purchase the ad. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Adisa Burton. Thank you for watching.